Hi and welcome back to Interface Labs. In this video we're going to be having a look at triggers and finding out what triggers are in terms of Interbase. Now there's some really good reading on these if you have a look at docs.embarkadero.com forward slash products forward slash Interbase and also if you have a look there's an article from a few years ago which is still highly relevant to triggers and their usage on EDN which is article 27197. And it's very much recommended that you read that article along with watching this video. So, what are triggers and you know, how do we use them? Well, firstly, triggers are fast. They're pre-optimized code that's run against the database. They're centralized logic that is active on the database. So no matter how you connect into it and use the database, that logic is always going to run. They're called automatically as data changes on inserts, updates, and deletes. They take no parameters and they return no values. So they're literally a notification that something has changed on the record and then you can deal with the record at that point in time. So there's six different states for a trigger to run at. They either run before an insert, before an update, before a deletion of record, or they run after the event, so after the insert, update, or delete. Now, whilst they run, you can find out what the current and what the new value is by using the new dot and after dot prefix for the fields. So if we have a look at an example trigger here, we can see that on the light blue in the middle here, we're using new dot ID to find the new value for the ID field. Now, if this was an after update, then we could use the old dot ID and the new dot ID to compare differences between the, the previous and the current state of the record. Now, to create a trigger, we need to initially use this set term and just change the terminator from semicolon to anything else and typically use the, the caret sign and then we can use the create generator um, keywords to create a generator you then pass as in red here the name that you want to call the generator so that our example here is suppliers auto ID and you then specify which table this trigger is for so for example for the suppliers table and then you then set if it's going to be active or inactive. You then set the position that it's going to run. So if it's before, uh, before or after insert, update or delete. And the, uh, the final optional part to that is a, a priority order. And the position is zero through to whatever you want it to be. And that will then define at what point it runs and which order because you can have multiple triggers against the same table. You also have the ability to declare local variables and this is covered in the paper but we're not going to cover that here and, and you can define local variables that you can then use to collect data and uh, run as part of your, your blocker code between the begin end. At the end of the trigger then just terminate with the caret and that will then uh, complete and run that statement and then we can set the terminator back to the typical semicolon. Now the reason we use we have to set the terminator is if you have a look here you can see that at the end of the line of code we need to use the semicolon within the trigger uh, so we need that's why we need to set the terminator to something other than what it normally is. Now after a trigger has been created there may be a time that you need to disable the trigger if you're running some maintenance or some scripts against the database and you don't want those triggers to run. Now you can do that using the alter trigger then the trigger name and then just setting it to inactive or inactive as the two example scripts here show. You can also do that using IB console so let's go and have a look at that example trigger and how we can set it inactive and active using IB console. So here we have my test database with my triggers listed and we can see here we've got a suppliers 
auto ID trigger that we've created. Now using IB console, we have the ability here to alter the selected item. We can set this to inactive just by unticking this box and then choosing OK. We also have the ability in here to add local variables. So we could add one here and we could say this is a local variable called foo and we can make this an integer, say OK. And then we can see here now we've got a declared local variable. So very easy to come in and, and uh, edit the statements in here. And we can then write in our SQL code and we can see the reference fields that we have available for the suppliers table. We can change the when the trigger, uh, the trigger type. We can also change the position if we want to change the position value here as well. So quite a few things you can do to help manage and edit your triggers from within Ivy Console.